Well, hello. Welcome to the spooky season. And to get into the spooky spirit, I'm not gonna be an MLA for this episode. I'm gonna be a rainbow pumpkin. I couldn't think of anything better than this. Oops. Also, this marks the start of the holiday season. Not to me though, LMAO. So let's see what episodes were released to start off the last and best part of the year. In Moser October. Yeah. No, 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 no. Andy, what the hell are you doing on my show? You are not doing this episode of Mozar. First of all, October is supposed to be scary, not dressing up as a pumpkinized Jew. Scary? What the hell are you supposed to be? <laughs> Monica, my <da. laughs> Okay, no. Your weebness is not ruining my show. Now get the hell out. <laughs> you don't have a choice, Molly. October is my month. And even if you try to stop me, <laughs> I've got a frying pan. <laughs> now then, with him out of the way, let's get right into Moser October. Alright, so I'll start off by saying this episode has been an improvement from the past ones. The host's voice change is a great improvement, as it fits with the character, so props onto the voice actor. The script has improved for some areas of the episode, however, the first scene and the after credit scene is not needed. The first scene could have had the host revive monitor in the first place without the whole ritual thing. If I can add in on something about writing, I think the second scene of Ice Tea pranking Chroma by breaking his phone could have been better. Chroma gave in way too easily, and Ice Tea was just a plain out of death. It didn't feel like there was any motivation behind doing that to him. Well, if you watched the other episodes of Entity Frenzy, you'd know that Chroma and Ice Tea had a conflict for a while. Wait, who said you could be let out of that cage? It's my channel, bitch. This is also my show. I can literally edit you out of this. <laughs> Do that, and you won't have me in any more of your Jackbox videos, cause you know I'm funny. Ahem, back to the topic. Animation was really good. It all goes smoothly in each scene, but I do have a problem with the consistent style changes in every scene. It's really distracting, and I think some rigs might work for it. Yeah, I'd agree. But the main problem was that the episode felt short, and every joke that was supposed to be funny fell flat. The YouTube tutorial joke wasn't making me laugh off my seat. But that and the challenge and the elimination just felt short. If you're going to have a challenge like that one, then maybe have people argue over pieces. Problem with building the robot, actually showing Prism building his robot, which I'll add that the robot design is amazing. The design overall in this show is really good. The assets, the attention to detail, but it sucks that you can't really enjoy the episode because of its poor writing, which can definitely be improved. How about the voice acting and characters? I can't really comment on that one since, yeah, I'm one of the voice actors. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Well, the voice acting is really good for the most part. I just didn't find Chroma's voice really showing emotion. <clears throat> Chroma voicing his own character? Oh, well then. But other than that, the characters aren't that interesting. The only ones that I can really remember are Cell Phone, Taser, and Prism. The rest don't have any interactions between one another, or they're just not getting development as they should. So, to sum up, I'd give writing 1.5 points, the animation gets 2.5 points, the voice acting gets 4 points, design gets 5 points, and aesthetic gets 3 points, making it a 16 out of 25 points. Now on to the second review. No. Who the hell is Kent? I guess it will remain a mystery forever. Alright, so the backgrounds and assets were really nice. They were really detailed and accurate to how they look in real life. However, two big problems I have with the episode is the voice acting and writing. There were quite a few who their voices were hard to hear, let alone understand what they were saying. And the music didn't really help it at all. It was really out of place and didn't give me the vibes as I think it should have given. The animation wasn't at its best, there were a lot of errors and things that should have been looked upon, but they were ignored and the result came out as weird. Like for stars, the balloons. Two contestants are blowing balloons, but where did they get them from? And don't say they got them from their ass because- Okay, so for the writing, the interactions were really boring. It was just the regular object show scenes and literally nothing different. People pranking one another, someone getting mad, there's someone who likes someone else and they're afraid to admit, 
It was all just so boring to watch since I saw this happening all over and over again in other shows. Can I point out that there has been some parts of the episode that felt lazy, as you had 5 minutes later slides when it, to be honest, could have been animated or not put in at all. There's also some areas where the contestants are walking, but the background won't move, making it like the contestants are walking in one spot. It's inconsistent, and if you want to make an object show, put in 110% effort, and don't try to cut corners, as it'll make it look bad. This isn't an attack on the creator, this is just to anyone who wants to make an object show, but overall... That's my part. Overall, the animation gets 3 points, voice acting gets 1 point, writing gets 1, design gets 4, and aesthetic gets 2, making it a 12 out of 25 points. Now, turn the next review! Andy! Oh my god, I've been so excited for this to come out, especially when it helped out with the name of the show! You really are a narcissist, aren't you? Well, I've been really excited for this to come out since I've been helping with a lot of the production. Not to brag or anything. But I did voice acting, animated, recorded, and edited the episode. So, compare yourself to me now, dweeb. And I did help with the script writing. Supposed to be voice actor, but became sick. And helped with the vo show that was meant to be. So you can shut it as I review this. Galactic Conquest has the perfect first episode. The script writing showed it's worked, and the whole idea of the show is really unique. However, not everything will be perfect. Two star Umbrella didn't fit in the episode at all. Her voice didn't fit with the character, her body didn't fit with the others, it, she just felt different to the others. And talking about voice acting, most voice actors were good, but there were some points that voices didn't line up. I'm gonna have to disagree. I think Umbrella had a really good voice and it fit her character. And if anything, the only voice I didn't like was Stars. I think the casting for the voicing is great, if I'm being honest. I mean, maybe that was a mistake to cast, but eh. What really bothered me though was the animatic. Literally every scene had a different style from the previous one. It was very distracting and again, regs will definitely help to make it better. I'm going to disagree. It feels inconsistent in some parts and awkward in others. But one thing that bothers me is how Recycling bin, to be honest, just felt like a waste of a character. What bothers me in object shows, including big ones like Inanimate Sanity and Battle for BFDI, is that the creators decide to make a character do things that will tempt the audience to vote them off. I didn't like it with Pencil and BFB, and I don't like it here. Didn't you do something like that in- Shh! Spoilers! Oh, uh, well, anyway, the design aspect was great. Of course, as the assets are old, they look a bit off, but most of them were really eye-pleasing and overall nice to look at. The backgrounds, too, as someone whose favorite color is purple. I didn't even try to look at something else in the background in this episode. And can I say, the whole scene with Belle and Umbrella trying to find the host, legit, I felt cringe crawling up my spine. I'm sorry, but it was disgusting. I'm sorry for whoever animated it, but it felt wrong so many ways with the rest of the episode, especially when you have used those faces from IDFB, which rest in peace. However, I'm doing Ammo's job here unless you decide to change the score. Haha, <laughs> bitch, you thought. So, writing gets 4 points, animatic gets 2.5 points, voice acting gets 4.5 points, design gets 4, and aesthetic gets 4.5, making it. <laughs> Please, I'm great in this one as well. Writing gets 4.5 points, animatic gets 3.5 uh, points, voice acting gets 4.5 points because I'll agree with ammo for that. Design gets 3 points and aesthetics get 5. So grading ammo's grades is 19.5 points and my grade being 20.5 points. Now, let's review the last episode of this month's Mozart. Honestly, there were so many good things about this episode, I don't know where to start. I do. The script writing in this episode is phenomenal. It's so intriguing about how this show is going to work out, and I'm loving the development of these characters. There's really one thing I didn't like about the writing, and that is how dramatic Floor is. Just because someone betrayed you last episode doesn't mean you need to lose it all completely. The same goes with Smarty. She was so offended just because Stinky Lampshade didn't want to go with her. I can agree. And the part with things in Picture Frame's relationship is going too fast. I do think 
the whole thing with Thing and Picture Frame should be like how Chef was helping DJ in Total Jam action. But again, it just felt weird. Wow, I made another Total Drama reference, who would have believed it? But really, other than a few points, the writing of this episode was indeed phenomenal. The challenge is taking something so simple and making it 10 times more difficult, and I love this kind of twist. The name linking as well from the elimination to the show, it's really filling up your creative juice. I do however think that consistency with how much screen time a character gets is a bit off though, as Speech Bubble didn't have as much screen time at all in this episode, and I think Ruler and Lampshade had a bit too much screen time in my opinion. But overall, great episode Jordan! This is seriously becoming one of my favourite object shows! I do want to point out how consistent the animation is. It's amazing how it's all in one style and it looks like it's animated by someone specific and not multiple people. And honestly, what I love more than the writing of the show is the design. The show is really kicks in with the backgrounds, assets, and something as such as simple as elimination bars that show the votes. It's really amazing what we can do with such potential. So, with that being said, I'm giving 4 points on voice acting, 5 points on animation, voice acting gets 4.5 points, Design gets 5 points and aesthetics gets 5 points too. Ammo? Well, it's honestly just the same as you, but I also add a bonus 5 points for creativity, making a total of 28.5 out of 25 points. It's broken the limit! Wow! And Ammo agrees with me with something! Oh wow, such a miracle. Anyways, thanks y'all for watching the two of us being stupid and saying our opinion no one asked for. Being stupid? I'm fabulous, darling. You just don't know it. Shut up, drag queen. And honest to god, if you haven't already, subscribe to Amalite's channel if you haven't. Making projects like these and battle for trillion dollars means a lot to Amal, and he deserves the appreciation. Wow, he actually said something sweet and honest. Y'all should give a sub to Andy as well. He has a really good object show that I'm really looking forward to, and of course, we'll be featured in Moser once it comes out. And hey, just for fun, if this video gets 100 likes, then you might see me again in another Moser. Or someone else. Who knows? Haha, <laughs> it's most probably never gonna happen since there's no way 100 people to actually like this. Anyways, y'all, remember to write if there's any show I should be on the lookout for down in the comments. And I'll see you in November, and happy Halloween! No, if you excuse me, I have caddies to scare. <laughs>